Praise the Lord. Praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore, from the rising of the sun to its setting. The name of the Lord is to be praised. The Lord is high above all nations and his glory above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God, who is seated on high, who looks far down on the heavens and the earth? He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap to make them sit with princes, with the princes of his people. He gives the barren woman a home, making her the joyous mother of children. Praise the Lord. Welcome to the Neighborhood Church Revive Podcast. We are so glad that you're joining us today as we unpack big ideas about God's Word together. My name is Sean Thomas. I'm an associate campus pastor here at Neighborhood Church, and we believe that God's Word is relevant and helpful even for today, which is why we take the time to unpack what it says here with you guys on our podcast, bringing in different people from the church, whether the pastoral staff or elders or just different people from our community. We really value having a conversation about God's Word. And today, Today, I feel like I always say it's a special day, but it is a unique and special day today because we're joined by two non pastor staff people, but people who are integral to our church community. We have Steve Ellis joining us. Good morning, Sean. Hey, Steve. Good to see you, man. And Steve, you've been you've been on the podcast a handful of times, at least. Yeah, a few times. Yeah, uh, this, and particularly since I've I've retired last year, uh, they're giving me more and more opportunities to preach. So nice. I'm enjoying. Yeah. It. And you you serve. We were kind of talking before we started recording. You've served on the elder staff in the past. You're going through again. You cycle through, I guess. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I call myself one of the uh, recycled elders of Neighborhood <laughs> Church. I'm <laughs> on my second stint on the elder board, but. Uh, just about to come to the end of, of that tenure. So awesome. Yeah. It's always glad to, a good thing to have like our elder board and different people from our community. Um, uh, the angels are singing from above, yeah, hey. <laughs> blessing our time here. Their veils. That's right. And then we're also joined by pastor Mike Wilson, uh, in the, from the, Baptist, uh, what is the name of your church? Mike? First Baptist Los Al. First Baptist Church of Los Al, which happens to be the same campus that the Los Al branch of Neighborhood Church uh, worships at in the morning. And yeah, welcome. Good to have you here. Good to be here. This is my third time. On the podcast. On the podcast. And how long have you been pastor over at uh, the Los Al Baptist? Oh my goodness. 27, since ni- 19, 1992-ish. Okay, and you were, we were just talking, you were a chaplain for the, pol- uh, which police department? Uh, Buena Park Police Department, I served as a chaplain there for several years, and while I was also pastor at the First Baptist Church of Cyprus, that was my first church, I'm hmm. at my last church. Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I'm, awesome. I'm just the current pastor. The current, yes, the current serving pastor. Yeah. And for those of you listening, um, and, and we also, uh, Steve and Mike, we have a number of folks uh, through, you know, just reaching out to us, uh, people out of state who listen to our podcast, even out of the country. So welcome for those of you listening, but also yeah, welcome just, indeed. Yeah. yeah, just to give you guys a little bearings uh, for our audience. Um, Neighborhood Church is in Cypress, California. It's a great large campus. Uh, we also have a satellite campus in Los Alamitos and our community, that's where Pastor Justin and I serve. And the space that we worship in is the Los Al Baptist Church, just to give you guys some uh, geography. It's the city right next door, basically. Well, enough of the introductions. Uh, We're continuing in our Psalm series, our series that's entitled, God is Bigger Than You Think. And so for the summer, we're going through the Psalms. Both uh, Steve and Mike preached from Psalm 113 this past Sunday, but the four uh, monday the 4th of july was independence day and i didn't want this opportunity mm. to pass us by that we could for our podcast kind of unpack the history of our nation uh, you know being founded largely on judeo christian values obviously there's a lot of controversy and you know, i mean there's <laughs> always been controversy consequence of a free nation you know that sure. is the nature of democracy exactly yes yeah to have freedom yeah, yeah. To use the the classical term, a liberal culture, you know, uh, uh, welcoming in diverse ideas and diverse um, ways of uh, discourse. So there's been a lot of controversy through the years, but especially recently, you know, 
a lot of people are saying, is the 4th of July really the birth of our, you know, when our country was founded? Was it earlier? Was it later or what? So I just, especially with these gentlemen, their backgrounds, I thought it would be appropriate for us to, yeah, just unpack the 4th of July, what it means to them and just, you know, how it impacts us today as Christians living in the United States. So Steve, uh, I, just to put you right on the spot, sure. 4th of July, what does that mean to you? What is the, uh, it, do you have a history with the date, a connection? Well, I, uh, you know, I, I have a, a, a personal fondness for the holiday. It's yeah. one of my favorite holidays of the year. I mean, you know, juicy burgers and explosions. What more could a guy want, right? <laughs> That's, yeah, all American right <laughs> yeah, there. It is yeah. all American. Well, you know, people talk a lot about American exceptionalism. And, uh, you know, I, I, I was thinking this week about, you know, some of the firsts, you know, first man on the moon, actually yeah. first man flight, Orwell and Wilbur, uh, true, yeah. you know, the internet, uh, you know, just think about that. <laughs> Al was Gore a, made that, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I know he thinks he does, but it was, it was actually a uniquely American idea, you know, put forward Whoa. by the United States government in the 1960s, came to fruition in the 1980s. And, Oh, just wow. think how much that has changed people's lives. And we yeah. can, um, you know, we can argue whether that's better or for worse, but the Declaration of Independence, you know, we hold these truths to be self-evident mm. that all men are created equal and are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights. And that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Nobody had dared say anything quite like that before. Mm. And that declaration has become a beacon of hope for people around the world. I mean, we see it every day with, you know, the thousands of people who want to migrate here and make this place their home. I just got back from Cuba last month, and I can't tell you how many of the people I met said to me during at some point during the conversation that their dream is to someday come to the United States of America. Wow. So we really live in a truly exceptional nation. We're not even 250 years old yet. You know, I'm, I'm excited for 2026 when we turn 250 and have a real celebration. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and for those of, you know, people who may have traveled to other parts of the world, you know, like the Holy Land or older parts of Europe where the civilizations go back centuries, yeah. uh, we really are unique in that sense. But, you know, we provide opportunity for will, people willing to work hard like no place on earth. And we are one nation under God, mm -hmm. indivisible. You know, there's a lot of, you talked a, a little bit about, you know, some of the division in the country and dissension. You know, I mean, that's really um, the works of the flesh. You know, Galatians 5.19, if you read that, it says the deeds of the flesh are evident. Strife, enmity, factions, dissensions, disputes, anger. And we're always going to have disagreements, sometimes sharp disagreements. Yes. Even our yeah. founders did. I mean, you, if you know the history of Thomas Jefferson and John Adams, for instance, John Adams, the second president, Thomas Jefferson, the third president, they were on polar opposite sides of the political political spectrum, but they learned how to work together toward the common mm. good. And, and that is the beauty of America. Uh, you know, God says, come, let us reason together. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it's, it's interesting. Um, uh, there's been some talk, you know, about, uh, I know in modern academia, people will contend, oh, the founding fathers, you know, and people become flippant with this almost. They were deists or, ah, oh, they were atheists or, ah, uh, you know, and, and there's almost, it's kind of in vogue to really characterize the founding fathers in, in an extreme light. And yes, you know, we're coming out of the Enlightenment era, you know, and, and there was for the time philosophically um, and even politically a lot of, you know, kind of broadening, uh, I guess, acceptance of, you know, kind of, again, more liberal views, I guess, of the universe. However, I love that you talked about the Declaration of Independence, Steve, and, and we'll link that in the show notes. But just that sentence that all men are created equal and endowed by their creator. You know, I, I, regardless of how you characterize philosophically the founding fathers, that sentence, you can't get away from um, not only a theistic worldview, but also an active um, participating view of God or the deity. Because it talks about their creator endows an al uh, unalienable rights among these life, liberty, positive things, things for the betterment of humanity, yeah, which right. really, I believe, <clears throat> speaks to a belief generally by consensus at that time, belief by our founding fathers that there was a God who was active and concerned mm -hmm. for a thriving human population, yeah. which in my mind goes against an argument of a deistic or even atheistic um, 
uh, or agnostic, you know, kind of right. uh, point of view from the founding. Right. Yeah. Members. People will, you know, I mean, uh, John Adams, you know, the second president, uh, was on the committee uh, for the drafting of the Declaration of Independence. He actually chose Thomas Jefferson to draft it. But, you know, he said that our Constitution was made only for a moral and a religious people. It is mm. wholly inadequate to the government of any other because, I mean, cl- our, our country, you know, some people will argue that America was founded as a Christian nation and, and it was founded by Christian men and women on Christian Prin- principles. Mm-hmm. Right. But, um, you know, obviously inclusive of all faiths and all peoples. Yeah. Yeah. And that okay. was the, that was the principle, but the idea of the, the man being accountable to God and yeah. authority coming down from God. And, uh, you know, I mean, the 10 commandments are on the Supreme court, you know? Yeah. yeah. So, and if you've walked around the, the mall, the Capitol mall in Washington, DC, DC yeah. and some of the monuments, it's unmistakable, yeah, the references to God and, um, you know, kind of interesting too that the if you look at all of the signatures on the Declaration of Independence, more than twenty of them were pastors. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. I, th- I think I think it's twenty seven or twenty nine, something like that. And it's kind of interesting too the the evolution of the the statement that Steve uh, quoted for us: "Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness." Thomas Jefferson's first draft of that was "Life, liberty, and the ownership of property." Hmm. And then it was changed, changed yeah. to, Interesting. To, to say happiness. Wow. And they equated the two as the same, basically. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah, ownership, personal Owners, ownership. Personal ownership yeah. of property. Yeah. And we see challenges to that today. Yeah, uh, in, our, in, yeah. In, our, in our world today. It still bleeds. Through. And we go through, have seen things like uh, other countries owning big chunks of land in the United States yes, and we're yeah. becoming more and more concerned about that. Yeah, about yeah, so what interesting. Yeah, what it means to But yeah, that, that declaration just sets forth and, and I thought I thought an interesting word in there among these freedoms. Correct. Life, liberty and the pursuit of happiness. It doesn't outline all of them, but it, it highlights those three. Right, that yeah. which means there are others. There are others. <laughs> there, <laughs> yeah, there, are, yeah. there are others. And uh, those of us who have lived here, been out of the country for any length of time and come back, realized just how wonderful a country we have. And I feel like that's the part of freedom too, is to not, you know, spell out every, you know, be exhaustible and every nuance, you know, and say only this, yes, this, no, that. That's what lawyers want to do. (laughs) (laughs) So I guess there's a number of pastors. How many lawyers? I existed 40 years in the the legal world. Uh, That was my vocation. So yeah, that's one of the reasons for those of you guys listening, um, like we said earlier, um, uh, you know, our our regular pastoral staff is is off, but obviously we have Pastor Mike and also Steve, but you guys have fascinating uh, uh, vocations and, and uh, life experience in my mind. Uh, Steve, you mentioned you were a lawyer for 40 years. Mike, you served in the military, in the Marines, and I you did. actually did. Uh, I know you were served in Vietnam. You were uh, did, worked in aviation uh, for the U.S. Marines. I did. I, I worked in aviation. I, I My basic MOS was working on ground support, hydro, hydraulics in ground support equipment. And that... Um, went over in, into the fact I was I got to work on jet engines because that's how we powered the testing of them over there. And, wow. and I also served as a door gunner on a CH-53 uh, while, I, while I was there. Yeah. And uh, so you get a lot of experience that way. Hmm. Yeah, that's a, that's a lot of life experience, I feel like. <laughs> yeah. That's different. Well, I mean, very different from mine. You know, I grew up, um, I'm, I'm maybe not as young as some of our listeners or some of the folks, um, uh, you know, who are who attend our church, but I'm, I'm a millennial, you know, I'm categorized in that generation. I, you know, I could have, uh, when 9-11 and the Iraq II war, um, I was in my twenties when all that happened. So I could have fought, but that generation, like largely we had a choice, Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, obviously there was a lot of controversy back in the sixties and seventies with the draft and whatnot, but I feel like it's my generation and subsequent, you know, we haven't had to it almost feels like service to the country is a luxury that maybe it wasn't for prior generations or, or something that wasn't questioned as much. Yeah, we had, of course, the draft was going when when I went in Vietnam. I I 
just joined myself and with a aviation guarantee. Yes. And so I chose to go. And actually, I didn't even have to go to Vietnam. I, I worked for a lieutenant out at uh, the uh, um, in a, in the Tustin Air Base, and he was going to keep me there. But two of my buddies went, and I didn't have any other buddies that were close with. So I said, Lieutenant Martin, you got to send me. You just got to get me orders. So he did. So you chose to so go. I, cho- I chose to, the, to go. The field, yeah. Uh, out and serve the, over there. How do you feel like your experience uh, serving, you know, and and maybe not even anything specific, but just serving generally the country. How do you feel like that's informed your feeling about the United States? And even as a pastor, I mean, after uh, you served, it sounds like you got into ministry full-time eventually. I did. I uh, actually uh, was, I met my wife while I was still in the service. Her past, her dad pastored a, ch- a Baptist church down in Santa Ana, and they were out on visitation and met her that way and then started going to the church, and then uh, we got married. But um, my time in the military was, was very, very, very good for me. I, I always loved the, the America, and that, my dad served in World War II, and, and I just grew up loving America, but... You know, you don't realize how much we have until you're out of the country for a whole year. I was in Vietnam for for all of 1970, and when, I remember when we flew back on, and we were flying on commercial airliners at the time. And I remember coming in, and when, when we started dropping, there was a big cloud there. We could not see the ground, and the plane got dead silent. Not a word spoken. Hmm. And when we came through the clouds and could see America again, a cheer went up like nothing I'd ever heard wow. before. Boy, it was just, it was phenomenal. And I, wow. and most all of us, even though now we look back on, on that experience and we, we know that there were problems and flaws with how it was being run and stuff, I think most of the guys that served would still serve again. Wow. Yeah. We'd serve our country. Yeah. And you, you, we could, we, you can't always know what the leadership knows. But I, I've always known and believed that our country is a good country and only and that we don't want to take over other countries. We just want to help them. And I, I think it was President Kennedy said, if, if there's someone who is not free, then none of us are free. Mm-hmm. Wow. Steve, you've had. Um, I, I I don't think you have any military background. Like I maybe. don't. Yeah. No. Uh, a, a lot of military interest. I'm a yeah. I'm a huge uh, military historian. I oh, really? I love reading about well World War II that Mike mentioned oh, and the wow. Civil War and just yeah. you know some of the conflicts, but um, it's uh, you know it's it's amazing. We're our, our system works. Hmm. Uh, you know we're we're in the throes right now of you know the post. Row debate and the Dobbs yeah, decision, yeah. and uh, you know people feel you know on opposite sides of that issue. And I would really encourage people uh, if they're interested in the issue to actually read the decision. It's available online, and I know it's long, and I know it's written by lawyers. <laughs> um, but you know, look at it not the not a tweet, not a headline, yeah. not something somebody That's says different. about yeah. it. But essentially, that that decision says that you know this issue is so important, it needs to go back and be part of the democratic process. It needs mm-hmm. to go back to the people. Um, you know, there are there are folks on both sides of that debate. You know, yeah. we we talked about life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, and there are there are some who fervently believe that that issue is decided by the question of life and Mm -hmm. when life begins. There are others who believe that question is an issue of liberty, you know, life, Mm -hmm. liberty. And, and, and what happens when those two values intersect and there's tension and, and who decides and which value, you know, uh, gets precedent. And those are things that I think our founders intended the people to discuss and debate and reason about. And Mm -hmm. so, you know, having that issue, uh, go back to the local level and have the States decided, I think is rather, rather than, you know, essentially, um, a court, uh, where, where if you have like a five, four decision, it's essentially one lawyer making the call. Mm. Um, that's, that's not, the sort of thing that that our country intended. So yeah. it yeah. just is evidence that our our democracy works. Um, 
you know, we've kind of gotten away from, I think, in this country, um, healthy discussion and debate about these issues. And now when people don't get something they want, they want to run to court and say, well, I'll sue you to get what I want if <laughs> yeah. I can't, rather than sit down and try and persuade you yeah. with evidence and argument. Yeah. And and that's uh, that's not that healthy, you know? Come yeah. let us reason together. And, yeah. and, uh, and you know, Jesus said pretty much the same things to his followers who would be his disciples. He said, Settle things before you have to go to court. If you're on the mm -hmm. way to court with mm. someone, settle the issue before you go because yeah. there's, you know, the, the, why let unbelievers uh, or non believers settle the things of, between believers? Yeah. Know, that's not right either. I, I love that we're getting into this kind of conversation because I know for me, a lot of, uh, you know, like I mentioned, I'm uh, a millennial and then, you know, there's Gen Z, you know, and younger folks, people in their 20s and, you know, people in school right now, teenagers and even younger folks. And it seems like so many uh, on social media or wherever you see a lot of these arguments, even in uh, Christian communities, communities of believers, there's right. a real breadth of people lamenting mm -hmm. that Roe v. Wade was yeah. overturned, you, yeah. know, you, you know, people that I would consider <clears throat> brothers and sisters. And it's difficult when, um, like you guys are saying, there's no conversation or dialogue. And, and I think that's, you know, something that, you know, I mean, you look at, we just got out of um, a series, uh, we went through the Gospel of Mark uh, in the beginning of 2022. Right. For those of you listening on the podcast, I'm sure you listen to a lot of those uh, episodes. And it's interesting because we talked a lot about then <laughs> Jesus' disciples were all over the map in terms of there was fishermen, blue collar workers, there was tax collectors, there were zealots, you know, military, you know, rogue people, you know, yep. like that's kind of the swath of the culture at the time. And Jesus called them together to not only, only be a part of his mission, but to then go after his death, sanction churches, and then, hey, Amen. now you guys get to contend with this. And that's, you know, and, and, and part of, you know, church being the family of God, the body of Christ, is having those conversations, is having space, one for dissent or different ideas, but then also to have the foundation of Scripture and the Holy Spirit guiding us as we Amen. come together. Mm -hmm. And that's the beauty, uh, number one, of of our faith. There's room at the cross yeah. for everyone, every tribe, tongue, and nation. Yes. And that's uh, the corollary. That's the beauty of our country. We truly are the melting pot. Yeah. Uh, you know, we're a nation of immigrants from yeah. all different cultures all over the world. And, you know, I think, I think we need to get back to what you're talking about, Sean. You know, we just came, came through this pandemic mm -hmm. and, you know, there, there, I think three things that really came bubble to the front in that. And that was number one, fear, fear of yeah. death, Totally. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and that's a tool of Satan. Hebrews 2.15 says that yeah. Jesus liberated us from the fear of death, uh, you know, by which men are held in slavery all their lives. And, and then, you know, you had deception and lies and, and I'm not pointing the finger out to one side or the other. It was just so hard to get real information yeah, about a lot of, just yeah. everything, you know, what, what treatments were working and what the death rate was. And, and then secondly, dissension and division. Mm. And, you know, Satan is the father of lies. And we talked about, you know, Galatians 5.19. Yeah. And all three of those things are really tools of the enemy. And we even saw that stuff creeping in to the church. Yeah. You know, I mean, believers fell victim to that to different degrees or not. Yeah. So I think, you know, as we look at and we learn, which is what the Spirit wants to do is to, you know, as we continue to grow and become more like the image of Christ, we, we sort of autopsy, mm. uh, you know, <laughs> what we've come through. Yeah. And how do we then do better the next time? Yeah, how do totally. we avoid these pitfalls? Yeah, so, tell him that. Yeah, I, I like that fact that he, he points out the fact that Satan is, of course, the father of lies. I, yes, he is. I, I, I've been pointing out for my uh, um, people that if you go back into Genesis eight twenty eight twenty two, one of the big lies that the devil has working today has to do with this global warming stuff and climate change stuff. And the Bible is really clear in Genesis 8.22, and I think I even have it here. It says, while the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, and day and night shall not cease. 
That's God says, right. I'm in charge of this stuff. Hmm. Right. Yeah, I mean, there's another issue that we should debate because I think, you know, this terrestrial f- sphere as God created it, it's a pretty resilient place, yeah. right? It's been through ice ages and, yeah. you know, remember the whole acid rain thing? Oh, yeah. It was going to yeah. deforest the entire planet and yeah. then we had the hole in the ozone layer and, yeah. you know, and, and you just look outside, the air quality is much better than it well, was familiar. even, remember when we used to have smog days when smog I was little? Yeah. So clearly we can, and, and the Bible calls us to be stewards. stewards. It says yes. that in Genesis, yeah. we need to be stewards of God's creation. Yeah. So that's important. And, you know, so those tensions, but yeah, I, I think, uh, again, we talk about fear and, and fear being a tool of Satan and people are whipped up into, into a fear of, you know, the future of the planet. And yeah. I, I think that's overblown, but yet there still is that tension for us to be good stewards and to do what is right totally. to, yeah. uh, exactly. um, yeah, yeah, I was raised. It's it's interesting, and and um, you know, I, uh, another hot topic. <laughs> I guess this is turning into a hot topic podcast. <laughs> but, but you know, so hey, for any of you guys listening, we love our audience. If you guys got question, please connect with us because, like we talked about early uh, earlier in this podcast today, like there's a breadth of opinions uh, that that you can sincerely be a Christian. You know, like certainly, like we're we're um, we at Neighborhood Church, and we believe that that's you know. Uh, a part of our faith is that, like Steve said earlier, you know, there's room at the cross for every tribe, every tongue, every nation, even, um, gosh, I've been thinking about it, you know, in the book of Acts, you know, like the Holy Spirit was breaking out in places where even according to the disciples, this shouldn't be happening in the sense of they right. were surprised that the Holy Spirit was falling on the Samaritans, on uh, uh, on different people groups, uh, you know, on Gentiles, and it's like, wait a sec, God's doing something bigger than we thought. And the reason why I bring that up is that you know, there's room for discussion, for debates on any topic, um, and that's a whole big rabbit trail <laughs> to come around to. Um, when I was growing up, oh, Steve, you- yeah, no, I was just going to say, um, but you know, kind of tying it into the passage, Psalm one one three. Um, the the unifier the the constant is God. God. Mm. In the beginning, God. Mm. You know, the Scripture presents that reality right up front, and that's what Psalm one one three is all about. You know, it, it's praise God, praise His name, bless the name of the Lord. Uh, the focus is on Him and His Majesty and His power and His might, mm. and how transcendent He is. And yet, you know, the last three verses. Uh, the psalmist sort of zooms down from a wide angle lens looking at the universe to, you know, like one of these drone cameras that can mm. read the name on a golf ball from three miles high. <laughs> yeah. And e- even though we serve a very transcendent God, you know, one of the things that I pulled from Psalm 113 as part of my study was, it, yet he's so personal to us and so uh, available and so accessible and uh, so compassionate. Totally. And we never want to let these peripheral yet important issues get in the way get in the way of that and especially that unity even mike as you were talking about too when i think both of you guys were talking about you know uh, the enemy uses fear um division and that's and, and we need to recognize that as a tool of the enemy yeah. and like yeah we can feel you know deeply about these things but let's remember the centrality of God. Not only that he's a creator, he's he's <laughs> really the mover and shaker that makes things happen, but he deserves that too. Yeah, right. He deserves the focus over our feelings about climate change, Roe v. Wade, immigration, mm. weapons. I mean, those are important things to discuss and we ought to have opinions about those. However, those don't trump the centrality and the kingship of God. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. And I always always like the thought that the you know God, when all is said and done, I love that. There's a, there's a song that said, uh, "God and God alone is fit to take the universe's throne." Hmm. And what a what a poignant statement, boy. I'm gonna do you. Do you I'm going to put in the show notes, Mike. Maybe afterwards we can find that song and link it, maybe on YouTube or something. Okay, yeah, it's it's, called, it's titled "God and God Alone." I think Steve Green sang it. Ah, so, classic. So. Nice, cool. And for you guys listening on uh, for the audience, um, as always, we got show notes, so we got plenty <laughs> to look through. Um, well, I don't want to get too far. It's we're getting up against it. I was just going to say to wrap around briefly about stewardship. Um, I never grew up hunting, so I, I'm not. Uh, I, 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 
guns were not a part of my culture, uh, you know, like growing up uh, for right. me, like we did in hunt, although I have friends who hunt or who are gun owners, but I grew up as a fisherman and my parents, you know, and so that like, even though we used fishing poles, we were still killing fish to eat. And that was one of the things that my parents taught me was like, Hey, you know, we're good stewards, you know, sometimes, it, you know, and even part of the laws of the land, part of our governance in America is they have laws, you know, for a variety of animals, but you can't, sure. you know, if a fish is under a certain size, you don't take throw that home, you throw it back. Right. And that's part and of, I love that being- Or there are steward. limits on how many you can take. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Five of this species, 10 total or whatever it might be. And that's part of like good stewardship Stewards. being embedded into our nation, which I think is is a good thing. And I know that's right. a feature of other nations too. Right. But and, like, and we can we can argue about, well, should it be six inches long or eight inches? Yeah. Should it be, should be able to take five or six? I yeah, mean, yeah. You can have those debates, totally. but the core issue is, you know, we need to be good stewards and, yes. and where that lands is what we need to discuss as people. Yeah. yeah. Well, like I said, we're we're about thirty minutes in, and we want to respect your guys' time listening. If you're on a car ride to work or something <laughs> like that, but gentlemen, uh, any last thoughts? Or and I loved even how we circled back to Psalm one thirteen, our our, our uh, what we preached on from Sunday. But any last thoughts from you guys? Praise the Lord. <laughs> yeah. The uh, when I first looked at this passage, I told Sean, uh, told Justin, said, "Oh man, I love this passage of scripture because it it just sets up for what I what I think we." to do I, I learned a long time ago from my father-in-law he said God's interested in two things saving the lost and growing the saved hmm. and and before I tackle any message that's what I think of and then that's what I look for and shoot at in the message hmm. and this thing just opened itself up perfectly for that for yeah me. that's great Steve, praise the Lord, was your comment? I think so. That's totally fine. <laughs> hey, that was the that was the theme. Yes, you know, nice. praise the Lord. Focus on God. And there's a lot of reasons for us mm. to do that. So I, I, I share one last thought. When I was in Cal Baptist, for, I went to my, my second two years of college at Cal Baptist, and one of the ministerial uh, we had we had chapel every week, and one of the pastors who came said this to us. He said, when you've run out of things to preach, he said, you just brag, brag on Jesus. He said, that'll work. I'm going to keep that in my back pocket for next time I give the message. <laughs> well, thank you, uh, Pastor Mike. Thank you, Steve. It's wonderful to talk to you guys. It's a privilege uh, for me to, to hear you guys experience your wisdom. I hope those of you listening at home really appreciate this time that we have with these gentlemen. And as they talked about earlier, um, Pastor Mike McKay, Justin McElderly, and their families, uh, they are out on mission right now. They're in Greece, um, overseas. Steve, it sounds like you were on the Cuban team that just went back yeah which is really awesome uh, love to have you back uh, on a future podcast to maybe unpack that because mm -hmm. I, I heard that was a good trip um, really powerful but uh yeah, we just um, hope you guys listening at home really uh, just have enjoyed listening to uh, what we all have to say. And like I said, please, if you have questions, if you have comments, contact us, email us. Um, uh, you can email us at connect at neighborhoodchurch.com. That's C-O-N-N-E-C-T at neighborhoodchurch.com. And you can find this podcast, the Revive Podcast, on our uh, online. Uh, you can go to our website, neighborhoodchurch.com slash revive. That has this podcast and along with the other resources that we were talking about that you could find there. Also, you can find us on YouTube to watch this podcast. Uh, you can search us at Neighborhood Church of Cyprus or Neighborhood Church of Los Alamitos. You can also see our previous uh, Sunday services, um, some other uh, 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 videos that we've made as well. Um, also, you can watch Steve Ellis uh, preach the message from this past Sunday or Pastor Mike Wilson as well on those respective channels. Well, guys, until next time, we pray that God revives your soul. <laughs>